Okay, I'll call to order the uh, City Council Committee of the whole meeting. Could the clerk please call the roll? Council Members Brown? Here. Hazen? Hersey? Here. Jacobson? Miller? Here. Roberts? Here. Wu? Here. Mayor Marlin? Here. Thank you. Um, approval of the minutes of the previous meeting. We didn't get any minutes from the previous meeting yet. So we'll have two sets to approve at our next committee of the whole meeting. Um, additions to the agenda? Are there any addi additions to the agenda? Nope. Presentations and public input. I'm not aware of any presentations. Are there any presentations? No. Okay, we do have a couple of public input cards. One is Reverend Dr. Evelyn B. Underwood um, on the Subject was the Dr. Ellis subdivision sewer problems. She chooses not to address members, but asks that her position be entered into record. She is continuously concerned about the Dr. Ellis subdivision sewer problems. Thank you. Uh, second, we have Amory Gardner. Um, and did you want to go ahead and make comment now? That's the only thing on the agenda you might as well <laughs> talk about. Hi. You probably remember me because I was here not too long ago. Um, so I wanted to readdress the same thing I discussed before, which was um, recently the state had changed the law regarding allowing the sixth VGT machine. So I will keep this um, fairly brief. Uh, last time I brought up, just to kind of quick recap, that um, with the changing of the law of the state, again, that there's three entities. Uh, how that revenue works. The state, the retailer, which is like the local businesses, including myself, um, and then the terminal operator. And with the passing of the law of allowing that six um, gaming terminal, they decreased the, the percentage that the um, retailers take in. So uh, it does, with the ordinance of keeping it at the five machines, it does impact all of the local businesses, um, including the one that I work for that we will, will be impacted if we are not allotted that sixth machine. Um, an additional thing, though, that I wanted to bring up um, with that additional percent going to the state, um, included with the state's percent is also the local municipalities. So um, with that, with us getting less, if we were allotted to be able to get that sixth machine, something I didn't bring up is that actually would be a benefit I believe or I feel would be a benefit to you guys as well um, because then that additional revenue would come back to all of you um, well not you personally but to the residents um, and however you so chose whether it be outreach programs schools roads um, retirement I mean I don't know what your budget is or how you need it um, but at least from other municipalities I visited it seems that there is a, a fair amount of revenue brought into the municipalities so from my perspective, and hopefully yours, it would it would seem like it would be a win-win to help the um, local businesses, you know, bars, restaurants, all of those, um, to not lose their ability to cover their overhead and, you know, be a profitable business to have that six machine, and then also have that little bit of extra to go wherever you guys would need it to go to help your residents, um, and then addition, you know, give that added variety to people who want to play, so they're not wanting to go to Champaign or a casino or somewhere else. Um, so I'm just here to, to make a plea that you guys would I don't know, make a motion or however it is to get it on an agenda for discussion and ask if you have any questions of me while I'm here. Good, and thanks. I would, of course, facilitate any questions in a discussion if you had them. So. Any questions about the gaming for Amory? I think last time I asked... Um, there was also going to be increased payouts uh, as part of that law. Did that go into effect yet? Um, I don't know what their what their plans are for that. Last I heard, it sounded like there was going to be some specific machines that they were getting ready to pass it on. Um, I, I can get that information and get it back to you. Is there um, like an email okay. that I can send you information to? Yeah, I could I could uh, get in touch with you, or I could probably look it up. I just I hadn't gotten around to looking that up. I wondered if you knew, but yeah, um, um, we and we also get revenue reports. That, I mean, we can download the revenue reports 
I could state. give you my card if you'd like, if you want to email me. And, sure. Okay, yeah, yeah I okay. will do that, and I will look into that. Okay. okay. Thank you. Any other okay. questions? Any other questions? Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So that's all the public input we have. Um, staff report, are there any staff reports? Nope, okay. Uh, for, so first and last and only is ordinance number 2020-02-005, an ordinance amending Urbana City Code Chapter 3, Alcoholic Liquor. This was presented two weeks ago, and there been a few updates. Did you want to talk about this? Sure. Um, I'll just briefly introduce again and then um, turn it over to Kate Levy, who's the Deputy Local Liquor Commissioner, to review the changes at, that you had requested. So again, the purpose of this rewriting, and it's a complete rewrite of Chapter 3 of our city code, which is our liquor code, it's to clarify the language, it's to make the code more responsive and more flexible. We're still maintaining compliance with the Illinois Liquor Control Commission Act. We're trying to reduce ambiguity, um, making it easier to have a fair and um, consistent compliance with our city code and uh, respond to current and future business needs. So I wanted to, again, thank uh, staff, Kate and Jim Simon, Carol Mitten, and um, members of the community, the business community, and the council for reviewing this and um, providing suggestions. So um, I'll turn it over to Kate, and she'll go over the changes that were made at your request. And this is included also in the memo. Hi. Yep, yeah, uh, so the memo was included in the packet along with our uh, revisions to the code and uh, the ordinance. So I'm just going to uh, touch on uh, what is already stated in the memo and you'll see the memo includes the section numbers and the pages where you can find that information specifically. Um, we did not copy out the entire section, but, but the relevant pieces that were updated. Um, the first is, <clears throat> excuse me, um, we had some requests for an additional license to be placed into our classifications, a license that would um, enable businesses that didn't fit in our traditional categories to um, enter into a, a liquor license while they're exploring a, a new creative business model. So we've uh, created this incubator license, it's a class Inc. And uh, it will allow for a six month period of um, getting your feet off the ground, seeing, seeing how it goes, and then uh, at the end of that six month period, they are then eligible for an additional six month period. This gives um, not only the business owner a chance to fine tune what they're trying to do, but also staff a chance to determine if a um, new license is warranted in the code and um, gives us time to research that possibility and potentially build on what has been presented in this incubator license so that we can um, gather more um, potential businesses into that category. This helps us um, stay away from what has traditionally happened with the code where as one establishment would come up with an idea, we'd create a, a, a new license classification, it would just be put in the code and then we would run into problems with inconsistencies. So this is our, um, this will be our attempt to um, open the door for some opportunities. Um, we uh, addressed uh, concerns that were brought about um, allowing 18, 19, 20-year-olds into our Class A establishments. When we met on February 3rd, we had uh, proposed to change that to 19, and um, after public input and council input, we have reverted back to what we currently have in 
the code for the Class A's, and that is to allow for 18, 19, 20-year-olds in those establishments after 9 p.m. without a uh, parent or legal guardian as long as the establishment provides in writing to the local commissioner um, that they're allowing that to happen. Um, and in that, that, that reflects too on the rider that we created, the all ages um, live entertainment events rider that um, uh, moves, moves the age down to 17. We had proposed the 18. Uh, so it moves it down to 17, and so 14 to 17-year-olds um, can be in uh, establishments with this rider without um, parents or legal guardians um, present, and they can be in the establishment an hour before a performance and an hour after a performance ends. Um, the performance must end 11 p.m. is what we're suggesting. Um, we had uh, eliminated our different uh, restaurant classifications and created a restaurant and tavern classification to house um, our establishments that um, do significant liquor and food sales. And um, at the time we proposed this, two weeks ago, we had a uh, food to liquor sales ratio that uh, we went back and looked at and um, made the decision to eliminate. Um, so th that, is, that has been taken out of the code at this point. And just some other housekeeping items. The uh, Bassett training program, um, when that was set up by the state, they originally had um, given a 120-day grace period for servers to get their certification. And um, that was in 2018. That was just, that grace period was in order to let all the current servers have enough time to get in compliance. Um, since since a few years have passed now, and it is it is a requirement, um, we're suggesting it just be reduced to the 30 days. It's probably in the best interest to have um, qualified, certified, trained servers in your establishment uh, within a month, as opposed to a six month period of time. And um, other items, we changed the Class F Farmers Market License to a Class FM at the request of Councilperson Roberts. Thank you. And um, we defined the uh, days allowed in our temporary licenses. We had failed to put that in the code. so. That will be um, the licenses for the temporary events can be for multiple day events, um, eight hour, eight consecutive hour periods, and then you can apply to have an additional um, license for each day of your event. Um, and also, a few of the requirements for our applicants. Um, we used to have, uh, we used to require that our managers of our establishments were U.S. citizens, and now um, we're removing that. Um, we ran into a problem, I think it was last year's renewal cycle, when we realized that our code called for managers to be citizens and we ended up having about a dozen in town that were green card holders, but they were not U.S. citizens. Um, so um, we are, we're removing that particular requirement. And uh, the same state law says that if you're a sole proprietor 
applying for a liquor license that you must be a resident of the uh, municipality that you're applying in and um, we've decided to strike that also from the requirements we at this point in time do not have any sole proprietors um, recently though we have had had inquiries about that and um, so even someone who lived in Champaign then could not have an establishment in Urbana because of that restriction. So that's, that's briefly um, the changes we've done, if anyone has any questions. Okay, thanks. Any questions for Kate? Dennis. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, first, um, just I'm gonna comment real briefly, for maybe for the benefit of the public maybe it's not necessary but we're talking about um, the license which um, allows for all-age live entertainment event rider and we're saying that we're going to be allowing persons from 14 to 17 to um, to uh, come into the bar or tavern for the event and watch the program or whatever we're not allowing them to um, order liquor we're just allowing no. them to come in <laughs> and watch the event there's still going to be the rules that are applied to underage right. drinking in those events. Correct. And in the code, there are parameters in place in order uh, to qualify to have that rider. There are um, things that the establishments need to provide to us, whether it's a security plan or how, how they're going to deal with wristbanding um, yeah. at certain ages. Yeah. So we're being aware of that, mm -hmm. that possibility. Um, I had two questions. Uh, really. Um, I wasn't really sure if I picked up what the difference was in the microbreweries, the licensing. You have the class MB for microbrewery, mm -hmm. and then you have microbrewery two. And it seems like um, the definition for these are that they're um, manufacturing beer, beer, ale, wine, and other malt-based liquors or whatever to be sold on the premises. So is the B2 so that you take it out of the premises and be selling it at um, catered events and hotels and some other places? Is that the difference between the two microbrewery license classifications? Right. The MB1, um, the selling for the MB1, that's just to um, distributors. That's oh. not for on-premise consumption. Oh, I see. Would they? Would most mi micro breweries be wanting to sell to distributor and also to customers? Correct. And and the two that we have in town currently, that's that's what they do. So they both then, are under that MB two license. Currently. So they would come. Through. So does you think? Do you, are you aware of anybody who would actually want an MB one that is is, is um, ma making wines and beers or whatever it's completely for retail sale? Or I mean, to we're always sell? hopeful. Okay. All right. That answers that. <laughs> Okay. You're imagining if there's a, a location, uh, a opportunity for that. Mm -hmm. um, the other question I had was one that's, I'm, um, I was just sort of wondering, um, we do have these uh, service um, uh, licenses for outdoor events and temporary events. Mm -hmm. So if you were uh, going to have um, a fundraiser at a soccer tournament or a sporting event in a park, <coughs> What license would you want to be asking for? I guess first we need to know who's applying for it. Okay. Um, if it is a current license holder or, I mean, th that's the separation between the two at this point. Um, the temp C for the current license holders, the temp N for non-license holders. Where the event will be, whether it's a private event, whether it's open to the public, I mean, there are several different questions that um, need to be answered. Mm -hmm. Do you want to give me some more details? No, I just was thinking of what uh, what if, you know, I mean, I was trying to imagine uh, at sporting events or whatever, if people were starting to wish to sell refreshments, you mm -hmm. know, what would, how would they be classified? I wasn't sure where they would fall in among the various license possibilities. Well, it, I, I guess the closest we can um, liken that to is maybe our Sweet Corn Festival or the Miles at the Pines that they do. And 
we have someone like Riggs that would get a temporary liquor license to sell and serve during those events. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're not really specifying like what kind of event or where the event takes place. Um, mm -hmm. If it was in a city park, that would be something that they would have to work out with the park district too, of Correct. course. Correct. Right. Correct. Each of these special events seems to be a, it's almost a custom approach. Unique, I mean, right? it'll fit into the framework, but, but you really need to sit down and provide a lot more detail before we figure out exactly mm. what okay. kind of right. license it would be. Overall, it looks like this is rather useful um, direction for our liquor licensing. I mean, it's a little more creative, and I guess it responds to some of the questions that I know Jared's brought up and other retailers have been re representing to us. So mm -hmm. looks like we're going to try it out and see how this works. Should the vote go that way? Should the vote, yeah. Any other questions? Mary Alice. Uh, so there is a, a section on um, who's allowed to work in terms of age restrictions. And it seemed to me, if I could summarize it really quickly, if you're 19, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, if you're 19 and over, you can be a bartender and do just about everything that is related to serving and selling alcohol. And if you're 18, the only thing you can do is serve it and then take payment, but you can't be a bartender. Is that correct? That, that was my reading of it. Can you refer to the page? It might be 3.25. Section 3.25? 3 Section 3.25. It's on uh, page 9. Oh, yeah. I think this is where we matched um, the parameters that the City of Champaign had in place. I think that's where those particular ages came from. I'd have to double check and Jim is not here at the moment. So just, the, sorry. Meryl, the biggest difference between uh, A and B is that A is talking about uh, off-premise consumption. You have to be 19 to sell alcohol to people who walk out of a store with it or walk out of it in package form that last part of that phrase where it says off-premise in mm -hmm. 18 uh, you can be an 18 year old and get a beer from the bartender pour a beer at the bar and take it to somebody at your at your table my for reading is you can't pour a beer the only thing you can do is serve it and accept payment yeah that's right you can't be the bartender you can't mix it you can't pour it you can't draw it that's correct yeah, yeah that's years. right. But you right. can serve it. But, but the can bartender can give it to you. You can take it on the tray to the person at Correct. the table. Correct. Correct. So if you're a server, you're not limited by your age right. between 18 and 19. Mm -hmm. Of course, 17 and 16 year olds can't do that. Correct. Correct. You have to uh, be an adult. And, and so does that also mean that we have, um, I think Myers came and asked us to be able to, for people to pick up packaged liquor by the curbside? Does that mean that you have to be 19 or older to be able to drop off that Correct. grocery? Yeah. Correct. Okay. All right. Yeah, um, have you ever been to Walmart and bought a bottle of wine and had to wait for 20 minutes for somebody <laughs> that, that's seriously, that's, ser that's like 19 to ring you up? They Check don't your even ID. They don't even allow anybody. Yeah, eight, you're not allowed to. Yeah, they're not allowed to even do that. So. Gotcha. Okay, and then um, we had a conversation about curfew last time, and I seem to remember this saying that if you were 17 and younger, that only on Friday and Saturday can you be on the streets after 11 p.m., but I can't remember, and then you had to be on the streets or home before 11 p.m., what, Sunday through Thursday. Does anybody remember that? Mm -hmm. Because if that's the case, then we're going to have to amend this because they're allowed to be in the premise until midnight on any day of the week. Oh, interesting. Well, they, they can be, but 
but they have to get home. Their parents can make sure they leave earlier than. <laughs> they still have to be on the street. Correct. And so Correct. I'm just wondering if. Well, this isn't related to curfew. This, is, this was in direct request to what council wanted two weeks ago. No, I'm, I, I, I totally understand. I'm just trying to figure out if we're going to make uh, people who are under the age of 18 illegal on the streets if they're uh, at a show that ends at 11 p.m. Hmm. Without their parents picking them up. I'll go upstairs and get our curfew ordinance so that everybody has it. We Perhaps we could just bring it if wherever this moves and, and make that amendment if needed. I mean, you don't have yeah. to do that, I guess is what I'm saying. But if we could follow up with that. That would be good. Um, and then, so open alcohol. So there's a whole um, discussion about if you go to a restaurant and you bring a bo and you have a bottle of wine that is not finished, you can take it out even though it is open if it's in a sealed, transparent bag. Um, so that says to me that is the only time you are allowed to remove an open bottle of alcohol from any premise. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the only thing that you're allowed to have in your trunk, because you can't have that, can you have it in your passenger area? Or do you have to have it in your trunk? I think it's in your trunk. So the only yeah. open bottle, regardless if you get it from uh, a, a, some place that you're purchasing it, um, a restaurant or a bar or something, is if you get it from a restaurant specifically, and you have it in that particular bag. I just want to make sure. Otherwise, you cannot have an open bottle of liquor in your car anywhere, regardless if it's in your trunk or not. I don't know. Are you talking about the BYOB? When, which one are you talking about? I did not write down the page for that. I apologize. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to trying to figure that one out. Perhaps that's a question for the police department at a later date. But according to this, you can only remove open alcohol from a restaurant in the clear bag. That's, that's what I read from here. Correct. And this, this ordinance deals with alcohol purchased at the right, restaurant. Right, right. We, we can't control what people do with things they bring from home or from a private party or something like that. So, so. That, it, my question is with the, um, do we call it the pedal bus, the pedal bicycle? Pedal bus. Pedal bus. All right. So if you have to bring your alcohol to the pedal bus because they can't sell you alcohol, but they can serve you alcohol in the pedal bus. Correct. So if you don't finish your bottle of wine, you have to throw it away. That's what it sounds like to me because they're not a restaurant. So you're asking, can they take it home from the pedal bus? Correct. Does that ever happen? I don't know if people <laughs> ever have alcohol we, left over from the pedal bus. We don't have pedal don't buses have pedal yet bus. in Urbana. <laughs> um, so your question is what happens to the open bottles? From the pedal bus. From the pedal bus. And perhaps or if if the answer is this doesn't cover it, maybe we want to institute the same rules that we do for restaurants, but that's up to council. All right, last but not least, my last question is, um, the very last section, which I think is three point, sorry, 362, is a reporting of revenue on a monthly basis. I'm sorry. I, I do see in the pedal bus um, license. Right. Alcoholic liquor served aboard a pedal bus may only be served in plastic, foam, or paper cups, but I'm not sure it, it indicates how it can be brought aboard. This is another, probably Jim Simon has some further input on What page on is this. it, Kate? Page 24. doesn't seem like it's in this particular license code, but the transportation. No, it doesn't. It doesn't address transportation of unconsumed alcohol. Right. And so that's what we're looking at. Okay. Yes. We correct. can follow up on that. Um, and my last question: Is it new uh, that we are asking restaurants and bars to report their 
monthly sales. Is that a new thing on what, 6 2? No. That's not new. I couldn't no. find it in the existing code. But it's possibly there. It is search for revenue and it doesn't exist in the existing code. Right. It should be under, um, in the current code, is it under the class R? licenses it's also under the catering licenses that it's they're under required the to license. submit that information right. it should be under the restaurant licenses as well okay but this this is more so we're expanding it we're eliminating the ratio the 60 40 no i understand but the in terms of filing revenue returns are we expanding the number of licensees that have to report it by month for the if you want to so currently our class R license holders there's a special line on our food and beverage tax forms that they have to fill out that is to ensure that they qualify to hold the class R license so this new classification of the R&T licenses that would be the same concept but with the current license, we only do the gross revenues for the year. We don't do it by the month. Unless I'm not reading this correctly. Maybe we could just double check that. Okay. I, I would just, it would be good to know if we're, we're increasing what we're asking the licensees to report to us. I mean, I know that they file a food and beverage form monthly. Do they? Do? It's due the 30th of the, f of the following month gotcha. for the month prior. For, for tax purposes. Mm -hmm. Right. I just yeah. didn't find it in the existing code. I couldn't find it. But it's possible that it's there. It's 60 some on pages. <laughs> we, we know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's in that part of the code, Mary Alice. I think it's in the fees, the fee schedule or somewhere else in the code. I know I, I know I used to have to do it every month, so. It's required. It mm -hmm. may not be part of the liquor code. I don't think it's it part of the liquor code. Yeah. I think it's elsewhere in the, uh, right. in the city code. Okay. Right. Patrice. Well, <clears throat> while we're ha having, uh, discussing the liquor stuff, uh, I wanted to also kind of look at the video gaming um, area. Um, I'm sorry, what's your name again? Amory Gardner. Amory Gardner. Ms. Gardner was discussing, I, I noticed that it says that there can't be more than five video gaming, video games, and which was, I think, fine when the, when the state only allowed five video games. But if it's going to cause a revenue shift, on some level with the owners um, and everyone knows I'm not, not a big video gaming fan okay I'm, I'm, I'm put that disclaimer out there right now but at the same time I also don't want to see our businesses because we have so many in my ward <laughs> um, I, but I, I, I don't want to see business leave either if we cannot allow for six video gaming terminals is that going to be an issue or is that something that can be amended as needed mayor marley that's a policy issue so it's it shouldn't be part of this discussion of the liquor ordinance um, video gaming is in the liquor ordinance because the state requires every video gaming parlor or video gaming operator to have a liquor license mm -hmm. but if the council wants to discuss the po changing policy which is a separate policy mm -hmm. from this code that would be a separate discussion but it can be amended within this yeah if the if the city council decides to increase the um, number of video gaming terminals allowed in an establishment from five to six mm -hmm. then the liquor code would be changed to reflect that but it's not something that should be done through the liquor code. It should be done as a separate policy I'm, discussion. I'm, that's why I'm just bringing it up and wondering if there's any um, any uh, possibility for amendment with that policy. In order, it, yeah. Now, in order to get an item brought before um, the council for discussion, you you need to have um, two council members request that it be put on the agenda for a 
discussion. Okie dokie. Good to know. Okay, and the other thing does the and this is regarding because I was trying to and and uh, doing a quick read of everything you know for this week, but um, I know one of the the reasons why we kind of were redoing the the liquor ordinance in the first place was the uh, I'm trying to find where it says uh, uh, no video gaming with the packaging uh, like liquor stores or is there any is that in here because I was trying to. Thanks. Yes, that's okay. yes, that's provided for. Um, the writer wouldn't be available for that, right? Right, the writer is not available for video gaming terminals and package liquor stores. Okay, so that addresses the issue that was brought up earlier. Okay, thank you. Any other questions, Jared? I'll make a motion if uh, okay. council's done with questions. Okay, I'll uh, move ordinance number 2020-02-005 and ordinance amending Urbana City Code Chapter 3 uh, with regard to alco alcoholic liquor forward to the f full council with a re recommendation for approval uh, pending some of these updates that we'll get next week for clarification. Is there a second? Yeah, I guess I would do that. It's moved by Jared and seconded by Dennis. Do we think that we're ready for moving it forward? We'll find out. Any discussion? Mayor, Mayor, Mayor Myland. I just want to make sure I've got the list of things you want clarified. One is what happens to the um, leftover alcohol from pedal buses, mm -hmm. if it can be transported or does it have to be destroyed. Um, we'll look at curfew hours mm -hmm. in conjunction with, with the um, live entertainment. And was there a question about the open bottle from a restaurant or no? No, okay. So those two issues. Okay. Any other discussion? No? Ready to vote? Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Thank you. Um, seeing no further business, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you all very much.